This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Keep watching for more information and a special offer. Not so long ago, something amazing happened. Berlin's new airport actually opened nine years late and costing three times the original budget. Now, I have talked about this fast before, but what's not so often talked about is the airport that closed. What's its history and why was it replaced? Until very recently, Berlin had two airports. Tegel, which was originally the main airport for West Berlin, and Schönefeld, which was originally the main airport for East Berlin. The new airport, called Berlin-Brandenburg, was basically built on the site of Schönefeld, while Tegel is no more. Well, that's not completely true. By law, it has to remain on standby for the next six months. But after that, it can be officially decommissioned. Tegel Airport began life during the Berlin Airlift. West Berlin, occupied by France, the US and Britain, was in the middle of the Soviet zone, and the Soviets blockaded it in 1948, forcing the Western Allies to fly food and other supplies into West Berlin. There already was an airport in West Berlin, Tempelhof, which closed in 2008, but it was too small to handle all of the traffic. And so the French built a runway on a former training ground that just happened to be in their sector. After that, it was used by the French Air Force, but the continued rise in the popularity of commercial air travel meant that Tempelhof was getting too small again. So in 1960, Tegel Airport opened for commercial flights. At first, the buildings were somewhat makeshift, but work soon began on a proper terminal building which was opened in 1974. It had an unusual design, one which was Tegel's greatest strength, but also its greatest weakness. It was hexagonal and designed so that you didn't have to walk long distances. It was based on the concept of concentric rings. The outer ring was where the gates were. The next ring was for arrival and departure lounges. Then came security and customs. Then came the check-in desks and then came the landside concourse. The innermost ring was then for parking and taxi ranks. The idea was that departing passengers would start in the centre and move outwards, while arriving passengers would start on the outside and move towards the centre. This meant that each gate had its own check-in desk, its own departure lounge, its own passport control and everything. You would first find the gate and then you would check in and drop your luggage off right there. Then you would go through security straight into the departure lounge and the gate itself was just a few steps away. On arrival, you would step straight from the gate to baggage reclaim, customs and immigration and then right onto the concourse. No matter which plane you arrived on, the distance from your gate to your taxi was probably about 50 metres. In a referendum, the people of Berlin voted quite decisively to keep Tegel open, perhaps as a convenient city airport. But the Berlin Senate overruled and decided to close Tegel anyway, in yet another triumph for direct democracy. This wasn't the first time the Senate had done this. Previously, they'd ignored a similar referendum on the naming of Berlin's new central train station. It should be pointed out that these referendums were not legally binding, but even so. However, the Senate may have had a point. While Berliners didn't want Tegel closed, passengers consistently voted it among the worst in the whole world. Its biggest problem? Lack of space. The very thing that was supposed to be its strength meant that at peak times it was hopelessly overcrowded. Passengers waiting to check in, drop off their luggage and go through security had to do so on the main concourse, which was very narrow. This problem got worse as the number of flights increased and as the number of passengers on each flight increased as well. If you got to the airport at a busy time, you really had to fight your way through the crowds. Departure lounges were small and uncomfortable and didn't even have enough seats for some of the larger flights. And in more recent times, as more and more security was needed, it was getting difficult to squeeze all of that in. Also, there was nowhere for a transit lounge. 
If you were arriving at, say, gate 4 and had a connecting flight that went from gate 12, you had to go through immigration, onto the main concourse, halfway round the terminal, and then go through security at gate 12. And the airport was only ever half built. The original idea was to have a second terminal building, a mirror image of the first, doubling the airport's capacity. But the Senate never granted permission for that second terminal, and so that never happened. Instead, as passenger numbers continued to increase, desperate measures were called for. A waiting area was converted into a row of check-in desks and called Terminal B, which really made a mockery of the whole concept of a terminal. And then part of a car parking area was replaced by a small extension which became Terminal D and Terminal E. And finally, just a few years ago, a temporary Terminal C was built roughly where the original second terminal was supposed to go. Another problem was that Tegel was near central Berlin, surrounded by parks and residential areas, subjecting a quarter of a million residents to noise pollution levels of 55 decibels and more, including more than 200 schools and nearly 40 hospitals. Public transport links were very poor. A proposed metro line was never built and there were no railway lines anywhere near. The only way to the airport was by road, with buses frequently badly overcrowded. And most road traffic to the airport had to go through the city, either through residential areas or on the already congested city autobahn. And this included not just buses, cars and taxis, but also deliveries of kerosene. All of these factors meant that Tegel Airport was less than ideal, and so the decision was taken to close it once the new airport had opened. And while a lot of Berliners hated to see it go, a much larger number of passengers are very glad to see the back of it. So what's the future for Tegel Airport? Well, the terminal buildings will be converted into a campus for a university. The rest of the area will be built on to provide housing for 10,000 people and a technology innovation park. Whether or not that's a good thing, time will tell. If you're interested in airports because you travel a lot, you may have been frustrated by not being able to access your paid-for web services in other countries, and you might also be a bit worried about your hotel spying on your browsing habits. Well, fear not, because help is at hand for both of these problems. A reliable VPN service like ExpressVPN is an invaluable tool and well worth the money. And the people at ExpressVPN are really very nice. I know this because they're actually supporting this channel. Use this address or the link in the description to sign up for a 12-month subscription and get the first three months absolutely free. Hooray! Actually opened nine... <coughs> But the Berlin Senate does, uh, <laughs> and a technology technology bloody hell.